What's up, everyone? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I review games, manga, and make candy masks. I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime and manga, and I stream on twitch.tv/slash Lehua Superfina every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Today, we are reviewing a game, and if you like game reviews, subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next. Game review. The game we are reviewing is Shante and the Seven Sirens, published by Wayford. Now, this game is gonna come out on May 28th. We have been waiting for another Shante game for about three years. The last Shante game was Half Genie Hero, and there were DLCs after that. Half Genie Hero was the first title that had DLCs, which were Risky Boots and The Friends. There have been about four titles already for Shantae, and this is the fifth one. If you're not familiar with Shantae, Shantae is a platform Metrovania. It's about a girl who is a half genie and half human. She is a guardian of her hometown, and usually her arch nemesis is a pirate, Risky Boots, Queen of the Seven Seas. For every title that came out for Shantae, the game has gotten better. Half Genie here was amazing. So when Shantae and the Seven Sirens came out, we were hyped. We were super excited for this, especially since they previewed this game with cutscenes. This is the first time a Shantae title has animated cutscenes. It's the first time. It is amazing. It's very exciting. And we have. Dialogue, long dialogue for our characters. Before it used to be like basic stuff, like one line, and then the rest is typed. You only hear one line from the whole dialogue, and we didn't even hear stuff from the other characters, the side characters. This time we actually hear more than a sentence. It's amazing. Shante and the Seven Sirens is about Shante and her friends, her party. They go to an island. For a vacation, and a bunch of other half genies were invited. Now this is exciting because Shante was the only half genie that we have ever seen, and in this game we are introduced to more. So it's like very exciting because in the other games they have touched on the genie aspect of the story, but not fully. Like they're always teasing us. So in this game we're finally going to get. More, more stuff about genies. Half genie heroes were invited to this island. They're invited for a festival, and they are going to perform. When they are about to perform, all the genies disappear except for Shante. So Shante goes on to rescue them. Usually in Shante games, Shante has to visit other areas outside of her hometown, and she starts as a basic. Shante is usually started as basic. She can only attack, and she attacks with her hair. She attacks with her hair, and from stores we can buy magic. We can buy magic techniques, but to buy those magic techniques, we need to get money, and the currency are gems. Since I've played other Shante titles, I knew what to do when I played Seven Sirens. I knew that I wanted to increase the damage when I do my attacks with the hair. So at the shops. It's really cute because we use Shantae's hair to do attacks. They have shampoo, and you can get different levels of shampoo. First, you gotta get the basic one. Then they sell you the next level and the next level, and、uh, until you max out. The shampoos were the first thing I got. Then I got the item that helps attract gems. That way, when we break items that review gems, the gems can just float to Shantae. Because you can't improve your attacks and such without the gems. The gems help you buy these things. In Seven Sirens, Shante explores only on the island, the one island, and the way the map is. The map reminds me of a lot of Metroidvania games, which is unusual. Usually, with Shante games, we get a map for each. Section each area we visit, but this time we have one whole big map, and the map consists the land, and below the land, apparently there's like an underground city in the water, 
and they show some part of the map like a little bit above the land. Most of our exploration is happening on the land and below in the underground city. Shantae usually gets powers turning into animals. Every time when she's exploring an area, we're trying to look for chests that's holding a power, a animal form where we can transform and we utilize that unique skill of that animal to access in different parts of that map. This is a little different. Instead of looking chests or portals that give us these animal forms, we get the animal forms differently. And I'm gonna explain how this happens. So we have an area, this section. Thankfully on the map, they are color coordinated. They, each section has its own character. So we know what section we're in and how it's separated. So we're in the area. We find the genie we want to rescue. The genie gives us a fusion coin. That fusion coin is an animal we can change into. Remember when I said in previous games, we usually get the animal forms through chests or portals. But this time we're getting it through fusion coins. I think they did this because in the previous games, Shantae was always turning into the same animal forms. These animal forms that we have in Seven Sirens are totally totally different. We're still able to do similar techniques, but they're different animals. For example, we have the newt that does a dash and can get stuck on a wall. Before, it used to be a monkey. The good thing about the newt is it sticks on the wall and it can kind of climb up and down, which is amazing. That's great because there's a lot of places we need to get to. And that's the first animal we get, the newt. The first fusion magic you get is from Plink, the half genie. I spammed out this move so much because not only does it reveal platforms to help you travel, but it also shows you where there's treasure. Every area I suspected there was like a hidden thing, a hidden treasure, I would activate that fusion magic. Some of the stuff I found, I was like, WTF, that was there? Oh my gosh. As we're exploring throughout the game, we have the big map, right? And the map is color coded for each unique area. And each unique area has a boss. When we reach the boss, there's gonna be a gate, a very ominous looking gate. And once we enter there, we enter the boss's area. And to navigate through that, it's a puzzle. So this becomes a puzzle platformer and you need to use the animal forms and the magic fusion from the half genies. This game makes you think. It makes you try to figure out how to get through the map and how to maximize all your benefits. I like to discover the whole map and I look every corner, every nook and cranny, unless I'm in a rush. And then I tell myself, I'm gonna go back and get everything, which I do. I pretty much do that. For example, remember when I said that to get to a certain area to uncover it, you need to use the animal forms or the fusion magic. So there, there were a lot of times where I was stuck and I would exhaust every resource I had. I would do trials and errors until I just accepted that I didn't have the magic or animal yet. But I knew I was going to get it. And I knew I was going to access that era later on. You best believe I did. Later on, we encountered the boss of the area. It is a siren. Every time we are about to encounter a boss, they have a cutscene. They show a cutscene of the boss. This is not normal. They don't usually do this. Usually they just show them. And because the bosses are sirens, they're beautiful. Fighting the boss, we need to use that new animal form. Actually, we don't need to use it, but it helps a lot if you do. If you don't use that animal form, that battle is going to be really hard. Unless you're trying to give yourself a challenge, go right ahead, go, go, go right ahead. Don't use the animal form, but I'm advising you to use it. Okay, use it, use it. You know, they gave it to you, you better use it. 
after we defeat the boss, then we encounter the genie, and she tells us that she is gonna let us borrow her power. This is fusion, magic fusion. And in order to do this, we need a fusion stone. Fusion magic is new. We've never done this before. Usually what we do is change into animals, but this time we're using the power from the other half genies. So we got Seer, which is like a psychic, and enables us to see invisible things, invisible platforms, treasure. The other is Refresh. It lets us heal, rejuvenate some trees. So it gives us some goodies. We get electricity, helps us activate some machines. It gives us goodies. We can turn on machines that will help us move around through the map. And then we get Quake, which helps us uncover some treasure and damage a lot of enemies at once. It is amazing. I spammed out that move. And the cool thing about this is every time when we use the fusion magic, a type of avatar comes out it's like a spiritual avatar we've never seen this before and it's beautiful 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 another thing that's new is monster cards so there's going to be a section in the sub screen where it shows you all the monster cards you collected you think that you're just collecting the monster cards but each card has a benefit and you have three slots and you could put a card in each slot. Throughout the game, you are going to encounter rare cards, which you have to buy from people. And to buy these, you use gold nuggets. And these gold nuggets you find, they're either hidden in chests, trees, statues, walls. You find them. You find these gold nuggets and you use them to buy the rare cards. I highly recommend that you buy the rare cards. The cards that I like to use were one helped increase the damage for the hair. The other increased the damage of one of the fusion magic from the half genies, AKA more damage. And another doubled the amount of gems we get. Now this one, oh baby, I reach 999 gems fast, like super fast. As soon as I hit 999, I went shopping. I bought so much stuff. I improved my tax quick. Oh, so satisfying. So satisfying. Platform Metrovania games are really fun to play because you're exploring the area and once you get a certain technique that enables you to unlock more features of the area, you just discover more and it makes it exciting to do backtrack because in this game, you do a lot of backtrack. A lot. You do a lot. For example, there are some areas I couldn't access because I had to swim through it. Yeah, I was a little upset I couldn't get there because I was like, I need to discover more. But once I finally got that technique or skill to swim, ooh, it was very satisfying. Very satisfying, especially when I saw the map and I saw how much it got filled, how much I was clearing areas. I'm like, mm hmm, yep, I found that empty spot. That empty spot is filled even though there were some areas i was getting annoyed i was getting annoyed because i knew i couldn't get there yet i knew i couldn't get there until i got that skill that animal form and i would try to go through that area get to that treasure because there'd be some areas like spikes lots and lots of spikes there's no way around it. I would use the fusion magic to review hidden things. No hidden platforms. So it's literally just spikes. And I knew I was supposed to get through there, but I didn't know how. I tried everything I already had, all my resources, and I had to give up. I knew that I didn't have that animal form or skill for it yet and it frustrated me. But once I got that animal form, ooh, you best believe I went back, I backtracked, and I got that item. Very 
satisfying. Very, very satisfying. If you haven't played a platform Metrovania, I highly recommend you do because they're fun. It makes the game longer. You think you're done, but it's like, uh uh uh, nope. Look at this. There's more to explore in the area. There's hidden items. Go back. Go back and play some more. Mm hmm. This game is not done. I really like to play Shantae because she is a female protagonist. I can relate to that. Not only is she a female protagonist and she's badass, but the artwork. I love the artwork. Every new title, they're just improving it more and more. It started out pixelated, and as technology advanced, the artwork changed. It became smoother. They started becoming more defined, and they were able to expand more with the side characters. Like we have Bolo. Guy, Roddy Tops, even the villain. And now they added these half genies. It's like WayForward is telling us that there can be potentially be more stories, more games, more spin offs, more DLCs. Like, come on, give us more. As you can tell, I like this game a lot. A lot. So the game is great for beginners. And the game also has some content that us people who play Shantae will understand. There's a lot of inside jokes. One of the things that they show is battles with Risky Boots. In one of the titles, Pirate's Curse, we adopt some of Risky's skills, moves, and the battles that we have with Risky in Seven Sirens, there's multiple battles. And every time we fight her, she brings out a new skill. Once I noticed that she was bringing out a new skill for every battle, I would guess what skill it's gonna be. Like she did one where it was like a dash, and the other moves that she had were the grapple gun and using her hat to float down. So I was wondering if she was gonna do that. Later on, you'll find out which one. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. No spoiling. Nope, nope, nope. Or we're not gonna spoil this one. No. No. There are about three towns we encounter. Arena Town, Tree Town, and Armor Town. And each one has a unique characteristic to it. And the theme stays in each town. Since they showed the different towns, I'm hoping, hoping that there will be DLCs involving them. Like just that specific area. I'm not too sure, but I am hoping. I'm like, please, please, please give us more. And let's not forget the music. WayForward has been consistent with the music. They have other games and the soundtrack is amazing. But with Shantae, oh man, it's been consistent. So good. I listen to it while working out. I also listen to it when I'm doing my game reviews. I have a pump up game review playlist and a lot of it is Shantae songs. Let me play some of it. That way you get an idea what I'm talking about, okay? Yes, it's amazing. It's great. You can listen to it. Add it to your playlist. Go on, go on. Add it to your playlist in the future, okay? You're gonna thank me for this. For those of you watching, what kind of games do you like to play? Do you also like to play platform Metrovanians? Have you played Shantae? Which titles have you played? If you haven't played Shantae, what made you interested in Seven Sirens? And that's my super fan of review of Shantae and the Seven Sirens. 
Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments below. We also have a Superfina Discord. If you want to talk about it there too, you can also DM me there. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Thank you guys so much for watching this Superfina review. My name is Lehua, and this was my game review of Shante and the Seven Sirens. Don't forget to let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Subscribe, ring the bell, and I will see you on the next video. Fist bump! Hey, you are still watching this video. That means you liked it. So don't forget to give it a like. And while you're at it, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss future content. The Superfina channel also has a Patreon and channel membership. My Patreons, channel members, y'all are the bomb. Thank you for all your support. Here is a link to the Patreon if you want to support too and a list of social medias. All the links will be available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have much love, much aloha for y'all and I will see you later.